Hi everyone, welcome to another exciting episode, another edition here at A Week in Geekdom. My name is Giovanni Menendez and today I'm going to do something a little bit different, something that I have been wanting to do for a very long time. Basically, the collected edition tour guide of one of my favorite superheroes of all time, Aquaman. Everything you need to know about all the trade paperbacks, the hardcovers, omnis, all that fun stuff. And yeah, we're going to take a look at everything that's been released and everything I wish would be released because let's face it, this is a character that unlike the Trinity or other members of the Justice League, etc, etc, or even at Marvel, this is a character that barely has any collected ed edition so I am forever thankful for the movie releases and the cameos and all that fun stuff for raising the uh, collective consciousness if you will of my favorite hero with the mainstream audiences because now uh, I am very hopeful that we will get a bunch of uh, people that want to read into Aquaman and want to collect uh, the stories that have cemented this character for more than 75 years. This is an awesome character that I love very uh, much and I hope that people get to experience him. There isn't any Golden Age material collected anywhere. Uh, there was a rumor once that they were going to put out an omnibus, but it, there was no demand for it. I was really excited about it, but it, it got uh, cancelled, and it was going to be a Golden Age omnibus for Aquaman, his very first one. Unfortunately, it was not to be. If I remember correctly, basically, that would have collected more fun comics, issue 73 to 107, as well as a couple issues of Adventure Comics 103 and something else. If you would want to collect everything Aquaman in a chronological uh, matter, uh, you would have to, of course, skip the Golden Age stuff because that isn't collected anywhere. Uh, if you go into the Silver Age stuff, you would get the three lousy black and white DC showcase books. I, I am not a fan. I'm sorry. I'm not a fan of those books simply because it's thin paper crappy quality in my opinion. It's in black and white and especially on a title like Aquaman where color is so is such an important factor from the uh, fish from the costumes to Atlantis to everybody. You know uh, rendering all this awesome artwork in black and white is a huge disservice in my opinion. Uh, those uh, showcase volumes actually collect a lot of Silver Age material that I wish DC would uh, reprint in oversized hardcover or an omnibus or something uh, up to standard with the rest of the Justice League members. It's kind of shameful that it isn't until 2018 until the character at first had uh, his second oversized hardcover and his first omnibus. But regardless, those three showcases, they are readily available. They are out of print, but you can still find them. And they contain a bunch of issues. Adventure Comics 260 to 280, 282, 284, 435 to 437, and then it jumps again to 441 to 455. Uh, you also have a Superman's Girlfriend Lois Lane issue 12. You have Showcase issues 30 to 33. Detective Comics 293 to 300. Uh, Superman's Pal Jimmy Olsen issues 55 and 155. You also had World's Finest 125 to 133, 135, 137, 139, and then a Brave and the Bold 51. With these, you also get the very first volume of Aquaman's solo material, his first uh, solo series, his first series. Uh, that, they do collect, between the three chunky trades, uh, the first 39 issues. Now, here's where it gets tricky. Fast forward to 2018, and with the recent release of Search for Mira Deluxe Hardcover, we go back and fill that gap with issues 40 to 48. However, we are still missing 49 to 56, because the next trade that is available of that volume 1 is Death of a Prince, which is very out of print. I think it's the rarest book to get 
from uh, for the character. This collects issues 57 to 63, as well as some other materials from um, Adventure Comics, etc., etc. So that, in a nutshell, is the uh, first Aquaman volume. You can kind of almost get it, get all of it. Unfortunately, like I said, we are missing a chunk out of those 63 issues. So yeah, that was the first volume, which ran from February 1962 to September 1978. When that got canceled, it wasn't until 1986 where uh, Neil Paul Posner's uh, four-issue limited series picked up and became titled Aquaman Volume 2. It's a four-issue miniseries against, uh, with Aquaman against his arch nemesis, Ocean Master, and it also introduced the famous 80s uh, blue and purple camo suit. It's pretty trippy. I, I, I dig it. So that hasn't been collected. That could easily be a small... Uh, quality trade paperback that could be published so after volume two ended it was followed by volume three which is subtitled legend of aquaman and that was released this year this was done from 89 to that same year uh, 1989 uh, by keith giffen uh, robert lauren fleming kurt swan and al Vey. this was then followed by volume four which has not been collected this was published in 1991 it only lasted a year it was 13 issues done by uh, sean mclaughlin Ken Hopper and a bunch of other people, including Kevin McGuire, Vince Guerrano, and a bunch of other guys. And this uh, has yet to be collected as well. This could easily be a good sized uh, trade paperback like you did with the Peter David stuff or the same uh, Legend of Aquaman book that I just mentioned. You could easily collect all of that in one trade as well. After that ended came the infamous Volume 5, which happened to be the Peter David stuff. Now, this is one of my favorite favorite runs because it introduced me to the character. I remember reading Aquaman comics in the 90s uh, as a kid growing up and I really liked the story and the art and all that stuff. It was really awesome. A total of 77 issues. It ran from 94 all the way to 2001. Now Peter David uh, started the run with the Atlantis Chronicles and I it technically doesn't really belong here because it's not technically an Aquaman chronological book but it is sort of the prequel if you will, post-crisis um, to the character as well as the prologue Time and Tide, issues 1 through 4. But yeah, eventually it started with issue 0, and then Peter David continued until issue 46 where he left, and the series uh, continued on with Dan Abnett until it uh, it ended with issue 77, like I mentioned, because it had a bunch of annuals and stuff. So that is being collected as of this moment. There have been two trades that have been released and a third one is solicited as well. Hopefully they do finish Peter David's material, but they also uh, collect all the remaining issues that were not done by Peter. After Volume 5 comes, of course, Volume 6, which was uh, written by a bunch of people. It, it started the uh, infamous 2000s storyline of Sub Diego. Volume 6 uh, has 57 issues and it started in 2003 and it ended in 2007. Now, out of those 57 issues, out of all the that material, we're only missing a small chunk of it like uh, issues 1 through 39 are collected we had a water bearer release this was actually the first trade of that era compiling the first four issues and a secret origins one shot and that got uh, nowhere it they never published anything else but now with the movie announcements in 2016 they started releasing the material from this era they released sub Diego to serve and protect kingdom law which comprises most of the run, most of the issues, I should say. And then they went back and reprinted the Water Bearer with six issues and the one shot. So the only thing we're missing is a volume that would go between Water Bearer and Sub Diego with issues 7 through 14 or 15, if I remember correctly. That could easily be a trade as well, a single trade. It's not, we're not asking multiple releases multiple hardcovers or uh, books all the stuff that's missing so far 
uh, you know, Silver Age to now can be published in one book each. So it's not a, 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 a huge endeavor, if you will. So after issue 39, the series was rebranded as Sword of Atlantis, and we do have one trade of that, issues 40 to 45, so it syncs up perfectly. Now from 45 to 57, that has never been collected in trade paperback form. After Volume 6, the character went on a hiatus from 2007. He, of course, appeared in Justice League titles. He was part of the Obsidian Age, all that stuff from JLA. And eventually, it wasn't until the New 52 reboot where we had uh, a huge chunk of Aquaman ongoing material to this day. Uh, I'm not going to mention the original trade paperbacks for Jeff Johns' run because I do believe that if you're going to collect Aquaman, you have to have the Jeff Johns Aquaman Omnibus that came out in 2018. It is the perfect reboot, the perfect starting point for anybody to jump on board and get this character. This was the reboot that the character needed to appeal to the masses and get new readers uh, to discover and fall in love with Atlantis and all of Aquaman's wonderful cast of uh, characters. I, I wholeheartedly recommend the uh, Johns material but after that which was originally four trades uh volumes five six seven and eight i would like to see that collected as an omnibus like a part two if you will like make it like aquaman new 52 omnibus and include the jeff parker colin bunn and dan abnett material because it is very solid so yeah you have 50 some issues Plus the whole Aquaman and the others uh, side story series. But like I said, that's a side story. It, it doesn't really count for what we're doing on this video. Same with, by the way, same with uh, Tempest, the uh, Phil Jimenez miniseries. Uh, that's a spinoff. I'm not mentioning the spinoffs, but you can get them as well. They're excellent material too. After the New 52 comes Volume 8 with the Rebirth, and it is currently ongoing. Uh, you do have, as of this video, I'm going to say seven to eight volumes worth of material to get. The first three trades from Abnet are soft cover. We were originally supposed to have an oversized hardcover like every single other Rebirth series, but they canceled it. And instead, they went ahead and reprinted volume four, which was Underworld done by Amnet and Sedgwick into an oversized hardcover. And I have strong feelings against that. That's not something I would uh, really recommend because it's literally reprinting the same material, the same five issues, no more, no less, in oversized uh, format. And if you're going in blind, you're going to be lost because it's not reader friendly. You have to read the first three books to get what's happening and after the story ends it's a cliffhanger because the story continues for three more trades so i really do not recommend it and it's a shame that they would put out that book and expect people to buy it simply because of sajik's artwork which is great don't I, i'm not criticizing the artwork it's just i don't see the point where you could have gone back and released at least the first three in like a oversized format and then the other uh, stuff as well so they would line up it, it, collectors are just gonna have three small trades then a big ass hardcover book and then more small trades i don't know whatever that's my rant so after volume four uh five and six and seven are still by abnet but i guess i should mention that volume seven is technically the atlantis uh sinking of atlantis crossover with suicide squad and then the final part of abnet's run is uh, drowned earth which crosses over with scott snyder's justice league book and that brings everything to a close as of now we do have kelly sue's uh, run that is upcoming as of this video so that will be collected further down the line uh what do you guys think it's a lot of material but then again compared to other heroes like wonder woman and, and superman etc it's not a whole lot uh, overall, I do think they've done a good job of catching up, but like I mentioned, I would love to see a Golden Age omnibus with all those appearances and backup features. I would love to see the Silver Age material get uh, fleshed out with Volume 2 and Volume uh, 4 get a trade for each volume. And then with uh, the Peter David stuff, I would like, once again, uh, to see the whole thing uh, through and, of course, the Abnet issues as well being 
collected with volume six that missing trade between uh, the first and third one that should be out eventually that should be published eventually uh new 52 i would love to see a second omnibus collecting uh like i mentioned the uh, parker and, and AppNet stuff and with uh rebirth i don't know do oversized hardcovers because i don't think they're gonna start putting out uh rebirth omnis anytime soon although we did get super sun so who knows so yeah guys that in a nutshell is the collected edition tour of aquaman it is a wild ride i didn't mention atlantis chronicles or the 75th anniversary hardcover uh, but you sort of get the picture of where i'm going with this what do you guys think are you interested in collecting aquaman let me know down below i am very much looking forward to talking with you guys about it as for me i have got to go i will catch all of you on our next episode but let me remind you you can follow me on your favorite social media platform, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that stuff. And remember to like, comment, subscribe, share this video. Please share this video. Let's let's uh, start a trend going for more collected editions. We need more of this wonderful material to be archived for future generations, for current generations, for everybody to enjoy one of the more underrated characters in comic book history. Thank you guys so much. God bless. I will catch all of you on our next episode.